this is John Rinaldi. Welcome to another Modbus video. We do these from time to time and today a uh, question came up about data types and Modbus registers and how to map different kinds of data types into Modbus registers. So let's, uh, let's talk about that. Let's, talk about, let's assume we have some kind of Modbus device and I'm just going to call this uh, DevX. It's device X. Okay, so now when the, the manufacturer makes device X, it's unlike, you know, if it's a Modbus device, it's unlike a lot of other kinds of devices because from the Modbus network, it looks like two kinds of data inside that device. First one is registers. And the second one is coils. So what are registers? Registers are nothing more than 16 bits of unsigned data. Now, 16 bits is the standard word size for most computer systems. Uh, coils are nothing more than single bits. So this is going to be, so that device from the point of view of the Modbus network and the Modbus master is looking at the device and saying, okay, there's a bunch of registers and a bunch of coils out there. The registers are simply 16-bit values, the coils are bits. Well, if we go a little further than that, the manufacturer has, has the choice of deciding what kind of registers there are. And there's basically two kinds, input and holding. Now, input registers, and this is kind of, uh, you know, it goes back lots and lots of years, input registers are simply places to hold data that's coming in from the field. Holding registers are what does what it says, holds data that's being used in the logic process. Coils, you have the same thing with coils, you have input coils and status coils. Input coils, of course, stuff from in the field, status coils typically could be stuff that could be in logic, could be stuff going out. So, a manufacturer has to decide how many, of the, you know, I've got these four different areas, how much do I want to have of each? So I'm going to have some of this, I'm going to have some of this, I'm going to have a little bit more of that, I'm going to have, you know, some of this. So they decide how much of each of these data spaces they want to have. And they could have none. They could decide, we don't want to have any input registers, we don't want to have any holding registers, we don't want to have any status coils, we're just going to have 10 coils, 10 input coils. So that would be just 10 bits. Generally, you're always going to have at least 16, but you could just have 10, and the other ones, the other six are just going to be zeros. So they can decide. Now, how many can they have? Well, each of these spaces, when you address these spaces in Modbus, they're addressed with a whole word. And a word goes from 0 to 65,535. So you can get a total of 65,536 registers in this space, 65,536 registers in the holding space, 65,536 inputs, input coils, and 65,536 status coils. That's a lot of data, way too much to access over Modbus. So no one would ever do that, but that's how big the data space is. So, but so what they typically do is they limit this. We're going to have 10 holding registers, and we're going to have 16 input coils, and that's it. And of course, we know from my other videos that once, you've, once these data areas are defined, a Modbus master has some function code to access them. Read registers, read holding registers, read input registers, set a holding register, read input coils, and so on and so forth. And we, we've talked about that before, we're not going to review that today. Now the question came up is, alright, so we've got registers and we coils, but what if, if you have different, all these different data types that we normally work with, how do they ma match up to this? So, what are those typical data types? We've got bits, we've got something called short integers, We've got unsigned integers. We've got signed integers. We've got 32-bit floats. 
And we got 64-bit floats for stuff where you really got a lot of precision. So how does this stuff map into that register structure? Well, bits, of course, are, are single bit. Those easily map into the coil space. So if you've got something like a, um, a relay that you're going to turn on and off, you can, re you can represent the relay as a space a Modbus master could access by just allocating a coil. No problem with that. Short integers are actually 8 bits, so they're going to fit into a register with half the register always being zeros, the top half. So that's no big deal. Unsigned integers are 16 bits, and an unsigned register goes from 0 to 65,535. So that's no problem to store that in there. And now, a signed integer, though, Signed integers, the positive signed integers, go from 0 to 32,767. And then negative go from minus 1 to, uh, let's see, minus 32,768, if I remember correctly. Because the high bit, when you look at this in binary, the high bit of, the, of that signed integer value determines whether it's a positive or a negative. That's why 32,767 is the highest value you can get in the register without that high bit going on. As soon as that high bit goes on, then it becomes minus 32,768, and every one less than that is, is uh, the next one is minus 32,767, and so forth. So how does that map in? Well, that maps in because Modbus doesn't know anything about assigned, signed or unsigned. So if, this, if you have a signed value, it just maps into one of these registers, just like the unsigned does, and it looks like an unsigned. But if it's more than 32768, when it gets into another system, it now gets into a signed register, and now that system will look at it and say, oh, that's minus 52 or whatever it is. So how do we represent 32? 32-bit floats, 32 bits. 32 bits, well, that gets represented just by concatenating two registers together. The MSW and the LSW, the most significant word followed by the least significant word. The key is you got to read these things together. You could, because if you only read one and then read the next one in another read, they could change because they're, they're contiguous values, they're part of the same value. So 32 bits just gets concatenated. When you go to 64 bits and 64 bit float, now you have two more you connect concatenated. This one becomes the LSW. So you have four here. You still have the MSW, and the last one becomes the LSW. And you've got to make sure that you read all four at the same time. So all the different, you can, you can support lots of different data types, and these are just the standard ones. There's lots of other ones in Modbus, even though Modbus has a data space that's only defined by registers and coils. And when you pull data out of the Modbus register, you can then map this short integer into another computer's data memory where it recognizes short integers, map the signed integer value into a data table entry that recognizes signed integers, or and the same thing with floats. But Within the Modbus structure, there's still all individual single registers that, that comprise all of these different data types. I hope that was clear. Uh, we'll be doing more of these videos in the future where I'm always available for questions. If you go to the website, rtaautomation.com, and you post a question there and the contact us, I'll get that. I'd be glad to help you with any kind of your net industrial networking or business uh, uh, business communications as far as moving data around a, uh, a building. Uh, be glad to help you with any of that kind of uh, automation problems you might have. So thank you very much. I look forward to hearing from you in the future.